G'day and welcome to my favourite video to date. Having a YouTube channel called Motorcycle Cafe and not producing a video about coffee itself would be somewhat of an oversight. Sounds boring, right? But the relationship between cafes and motorcycles proved to be quite an interesting subject. Later on, I'll show you what I believe is the very best method of making consistently good coffee, so stick around for that. But first, here's just a little bit of history. The relationship and history between riding scooters or motorcycles and cafes goes way back to the 1950s with the Tun Up Boys in Great Britain, later known as the Rockers. The Rockers were a subculture of the British motorcycle scene at the time. With a fine weekend, a powerful motorbike and a girlfriend on the back, the Tun Up Boys set off. Two short days for riding high and fast, to wind and weave, and often to be a menace. Their rivals and arch enemy were the mods, who wore fancy clothes and rode pimped out scooters like this one. And some of them were just bizarre. They did this for no other reason other than to stand out. The rival groups clashed numerous times over the years, with the most notorious clashes being in 1964, as by this time the mods substantially outnumbered the rockers, and as far as they were concerned, it was payback time for all the years of being bullied by them. The Rockers were influenced by the iconic 1953 film, The Wild One, starring Marlon Brando. The movie itself was banned in Britain for 14 years, but its iconography still managed to cross the Atlantic. Marlon Brando was an avid motorcycle enthusiast and he actually chose to ride his very own bike, a 1950 Triumph Thunderbird 650, during the making of the movie. There's a famous quote in the movie which still rings true with the youth of today. Hey Johnny, what are you rebelling against? What do you got? The Tun Up Boys' ambitions of fitting the ton, which is a slang term for doing 100 miles an hour, inspired them to modify their bikes so they could race each other for bragging rights from one cafe to the next. There were no open road speed limits in Britain at that time. This was in fact the birth of the motorcycle cafe racer genre, and most manufacturers today indeed have had a cafe racer in their model range at some stage or another. This relationship between cafes, coffee and motorcycles still remains strong today, and in some places mobile motorcycle or sidecar coffee bars like these are becoming more popular. From a horticultural point of view, just as a peanut is not a nut but a bean, a coffee bean isn't actually a bean, it's a seed, from the inside of the cherry of the coffee plant. There are two seeds inside each cherry, they just call them beans because that's what they look like. There are two main types, the Arabica bean being the most popular and the Robusta which is somewhat harsher in flavour and has twice the amount of caffeine. Instant coffee makers tend to use a cheaper to produce Robusta bean, or Arabica beans which have been rejected at the sorting stage. This is part of the reason why instant coffee generally doesn't taste the best. While coffee is enjoyed for its taste, there's also a significant number of health benefits of drinking it. But there are also some negative effects, with the most common one being the effect on sleeping. It keeps you awake. Matter of fact, Half of the caffeine you consume will still remain in the system for up to six hours later. For bikers that ride in cold weather, one of the other negative side effects that you probably should be aware of is that it restricts blood flow to your body extremities, so your hands and your feet will actually feel colder. You're probably better off just having a cup of soup. Nobody makes soup in a cup like continental cup of soup. I'm no barista, but I do know what a good coffee tastes like. For years I used a coffee percolator the same as this one which certainly served me well, but you get a much more robust flavour using the immersion method of a coffee press. I googled and watched videos on the best way to use one and I tried them all. Anyway, over time, I developed my own method, which I consider to be the best method. In some of the videos I've watched, they tell you not to press the plunger down, 
which to me is just ridiculous. Why would they have called it a French press or a coffee press or whatever if you don't press it down? Anyway, grab your coffee press and it's good to preheat it first. And scoop in your desired amount of medium to coarsely ground fresh beans. Generally, I use two hoop scoops for each cup, but that depends on how strong I want it. Then pour the required amount of hot water, which is just off the boil, over your coffee grinds. You don't need to stir it. After adding the water, just let your coffee brew uncovered for about five minutes. Then pick it up and give it a bit of a swirl and leave it for another couple of minutes. This helps to extract the oils from the coffee grinds which are still remaining on the top. Doing this makes for a very clean cup of coffee with little residue. Then simply install the press in the top and push it down slowly so you don't stir up the grinds. Then just pour it out. Presto, a proper cup of coffee in a proper coffee cup every single time. All I want is a proper cup of coffee made in a proper cup of coffee pot. I may be off my dot, but I want a proper coffee in a proper cup of pot. Iron coffee pots and tin coffee pots, they are no use to me. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea.